This is KGW News at 11. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Brittany Falkers here with meteorologist Joe Ranieri. Joe, it is a holiday weekend and that warm weather just continued here in Portland today. A great day to be outside and doing anything with the family. Exactly right. And we're going to be seeing another round of sunny, even warmer conditions heading into your Memorial Day. It gets even hotter heading into the early part of the work week. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but let's talk about what we saw earlier today. 84 degrees was kind of the common number throughout many locations, a little bit warmer than more south you go away from the city in the mid 80s and over in McMinnville you saw a temperature of 86 degrees. We'll zoom out a little bit. The heat I was telling you last night would be throughout the east side of the state and we saw evidence of that over in the Dallas with a temperature of 90 degrees. But if that's too warm for you, the cool place to be was uh, over in Astoria. You saw temperatures in the low 70s. Tillamook, you topped out right around the upper 60s. It's going to be just as nice heading into tomorrow along the coast and we'll start to see your temperatures warm up a little bit as well into tomorrow. Right now we're looking at temperatures in the upper 60s throughout much of the metro area. 70 degrees at the Portland International Airport. Westland, you're seeing a temperature of 67 degrees. And Brittany, coming up with my detailed forecast, I'll talk more about the chance of just seeing the warmest day of the year so far, which will arrive tomorrow, but it's a better shot of seeing an even warmer day on Tuesday. The details coming up. All right, Joe, thank you. And as the nation reflects on fallen military members across the country, President Biden returned home to Delaware today to deliver Memorial Day remarks. The president spoke at an annual event on the Veterans Memorial Park Delaware Memorial Bridge. He reaffirmed his belief the country would always stand behind service members, providing them with the equipment they need and taking care of them when they return home. We may have many obligations as a nation, we only have one truly sacred obligation, and that's to equip those we send into harm's way with all they need and care for them and their families when they, re when they, re they return home. The president also mentioned a recent phone call he had with Chinese President Xi Jinping, saying the U.S. will continue to speak out for human rights. He also said he'll be sitting down with Russian President Vladimir Putin in a couple of weeks and will make that message clear to him as well. A Memorial Day weekend tradition returns to Portland, honoring fallen military members. Portland's Willamette National Cemetery is now lined with red, white, and blue. The scouts have laid flags for Memorial Day for more than 50 years, but had to cancel events last year because of the pandemic. Packs from around the area place about 180,000 flags on the graves of veterans to make sure their families know how much their sacrifice means. Some people, they don't come home when they are in the, mili the army, military, whatever. They're protecting other people, and then they won't come home. And it's really important because sometimes people won't get remembered. It is amazing to be back here. This is one of the favorite events for my family. We've been doing it since 2014. So last year when COVID struck and we weren't allowed to come, it really hit home for us. The scouts read the grave markers aloud as they placed each flag to honor the veteran. Many Memorial Day events have been canceled for the second straight year due to COVID-19, but some local sites are honoring the holiday on a smaller scale. We have information on events and flyovers happening around Portland for you at KGW.com. It is no secret the service industry was hit hard by the pandemic, but a bar in Northeast Portland is helping fellow bartenders going through hard times. Here's Christelle Kumwe. Because I've been doing it for so long that coming up with, with drinks is now kind of second nature. Ben Emberg has been in the restaurant industry for decades. He was a bartender at Clyde Common downtown until it closed because of the pandemic. You know, we all thought that we were just going to be closed for a couple of weeks, and now it's, what, 15 months later? He's been out of work since then. It's been tough because we haven't been fully able to reopen. Um, you know, we tried for a little bit, then the state kind of backtracked on, on guidelines, and then they kind of rushed them back, then they kind of went back again, and it's not always been to the benefit of restaurants. That's when a friend told Benjo about the Orphan Bartender Series, a program here at Cliff SpeedyX in Northeast Portland, helping furloughed and out-of-work bartenders. One of the things that's always been important to my husband Josh and I is just kind of giving back and using our space to help out and be part of the communities. 
Sierra Kirk Lubke is the co-owner of Cliffs. They had to cut staff during the pandemic, but mustered through to survive and wanted to help struggling bartenders. So we were trying to kind of brainstorm and figure out different things that we could do. She teamed up with friend and Angel's Envy whiskey rep Hannah Scolo to create a series called The Orphan Bartender. They come up with an Angel's Envy cocktail. It goes on the menu at Cliffs all month and a big portion of the sales of each of those cocktails goes directly to the bartender. The series launched back in March. Benjo is the feature bartender for the month of May. The more cocktails I sell, the more money I get uh, to help me you know, pay bills or pay for groceries or gas or, or what have you. As COVID restrictions loosen, Sierra and Hannah anticipate more bartenders will return to work. But that doesn't mean the end of the Orphan Bartender series. We are going to be transitioning it to still having a guest bartender featuring their cocktail, but the proceeds will go to charity. Benjo is grateful for the help and says there is something remarkable in the community coming together during trying times. And not just like stick together as friends and as peers and whatnot, but try to make programs happen to help each other out. Um, that is one of the, the wonderful and unique things about the food and beverage industry. Christelle Kumwe, KGW News. It's a tasty idea. Well, now for a quick look at the COVID numbers released today by the Oregon Health Authority. The state is reporting 257 new and presumptive cases and two new deaths. The number of hospitalizations continues to drop. OHA says 250 patients are currently getting treatment at facilities. That's seven fewer than yesterday. Close to 18,000 new doses of the vaccine were added to the state immunization registry. Dozens of people were out today at Pioneer Square to mourn those lives lost during the past year. I asked my grandparents, how on earth do you smile on the day that you bury your wife? She was your everything. I asked my grandpa, how are you even able to walk? He said, maybe because she taught me. A powerful poem read by that young woman right there. KGW was a proud sponsor of today's event called Rose City Rising. This is part of a series from Friends of Noise. They've been holding several of these types of events over the past year to allow people to come together and reflect on loved ones gone too soon. This event was even more special for some young Portlanders who helped by providing music. I have experienced loss in my life and the pandemic this year um, specifically was very, very difficult, very isolating and like coming together and um, recognizing that grief, um, reading off the names, acknowledging kind of the pain that we're all feeling. Um, it makes you feel so much less alone. And so I feel like that's kind of my reason for being here. That young artist played Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd during today's name reading portion of the program. For more information about Rose City Rising, head over to KGW.com. An advocacy group and a local church are joining together to help LGBTQ seniors. Galen Etlin looks at how the project Years in the Making is now coming together. Every Sunday, you'll find Rick Shule preaching. But it's God's grace alone that saves us. He's a pastor at Christ United Methodist Church in the Cedar Mill neighborhood of Portland. His church is part of what's called the Reconciling Ministries Network. Which is a network of churches that are bold in proclaiming that we affirm our LGBTQ neighbors and siblings, that we love them as they are. The church is using open land on its property to help build this housing complex set to make history. It's the very first LGBT affordable housing project in the state of Oregon. Max McCosey manages Sage Metro Portland, a nonprofit that helps connect LGBTQ seniors with social and wellness services. We have to remember these people are trailblazers. The mission is to help the marginalized. Many grew up in the 40s, 50s, 60s where they were discriminated against in their workplace, by their family members, by their friends and their churches. For some, job loss, ostracization and inability to adopt and raise a family have left a mark. Many are living alone and don't have that younger family support. That's where this new 53 unit affordable housing complex comes in on United Methodist Church land. Why is this important to you to reach that arm across the aisle, if you will? 
and the church has a lot of apologizing to do. So we feel that it's important to be a part of this movement, to be vocal about our love and our affirmation and care for people that have had unique struggles. The $15 million project is moving ahead with grant funding and money from a Metro bond measure voters passed in 2018. It will be open to all backgrounds, but with LGBTQ seniors in mind. If all goes well with permits and construction, the complex will open in 2023. Meanwhile, at the church next door, sounds of a Sunday service. Being people that take up the call to make things right in this world. A pastor and congregation that aim to practice what they preach. Galen Etlin, KGW News.